It's the 4th of September 2024 and today I'm going to have a quick look at Jimmy Savile's mate and Tony Blair's puppet Sir Keir Starmer and the reason I want to look at Sir Keir Starmer is because I've never seen a man win an election by such of a massive amount really win it by a landslide end up with a massive majority and then proceed to piss the British public off so quickly I mean obviously he uses the usual excuses to start with like you know things are going to get worse before they get better because of the previous government this is why nobody's ever held accountable in this country because whoever's in power will just blame the previous government for the mess and that kind of gives them a green light or at least in their minds it does give them a green light to continue the fuck up that has been going on for, for how long in this country now but a government's job in this country is to represent the people of the country and in particular to represent the voters obviously most Labour voters are working or poorer class a working class or poorer class people so why is Keir Starmer not representing the working and poorer classes in fact instead of representing the working and poorer classes is actually accusing most of them of being racists, extremists and intolerant and the reason that he claims that these people are racists, extremists and intolerant is mainly because these people disagree with the mass immigration policy that Labour is so fond to continue to, to continue with as did the Conservatives. Now what's going to happen in the future is that nobody's going to ever want to vote Labour again after this absolute mess that Keir Starmer has made. It's my prediction that Keir Starmer will not be Prime Minister in a year, maybe 18 months. I'll be amazed if he lasts two years. I, I reckon he will be kicked out within two years tops because like I say I've never seen anybody piece so many people off so quickly. In fact to me he should be arrested for inciting ri riots and violence because these riots and violence have been caused by people like him, by people not doing their job, lying to us. I mean, it should be illegal for a politician to lie. They should be going to prison for every time they lie. It's funny how politicians never end up in prison. It's funny how the whole system is seems to be designed to protect them from the law more than to protect us. I mean, these people can just say and do whatever they want and then when they get into power they just proceed to do the exact opposite to what they said they was going to do and the reason that they do that in their own words is mainly because of the previous government it's always the same I remember David Cameron saying things are going to get worse before they get better and now Keir Starmer saying the exact same thing it's just a green light for them to go around pissing people off now People in this country are allowed an opinion on any government policy. If people don't like mass immigration, then they should be allowed to express that opinion freely without being called names like racists and extremists. People like Tommy Robinson is constantly classed and constantly, even by the British public, they go around calling him an extremist and a racist. But what is he doing? All that Tommy Robinson is doing is using his freedom of speech that we all have we're all supposed to have freedom of speech and if people don't use it which the vast majority of people in britain don't then you're going to lose it and when people do use it people like tommy robinson and say things that the media and the british government don't want pe people to be saying then the british public turn on them and start accusing them of being racists and stuff and it's like well if that's your only argument against it, is just name calling instead of actually looking at the actual facts, then you know you're as bad as the government at the end of the day because you're absolutely blind to the real problems that this country is facing, just like the British government. I mean, with all the problems that we've got in Britain, and I'm talking about problems like you know Britain's transport is absolutely fucked, the roads are absolutely chaotic, the trains are like you're stepping back in time, and you know, the NHS is overrun, it's almost impossible to find a house, councils are getting bust, despite the fact that the council tax rates are absolutely extortionate, 
they're just blowing money just hemorrhaging money and it's usually going from the public purse into some private company i mean like i say in the case of shropshire council paying 52 million pound for a building that's valued at 12 million pound you know it's all a scam everything in this country is an absolute scam there's nothing but problems everywhere but don't worry Keir Starmer's got a plan and his plan is to stop people smoking in beer gardens in pubs now obviously people have been banned from smoking in pubs in the United Kingdom for I don't know 15 20 years it's been a long time I can't remember exactly how long but people have been banned from smoking in Britain for a long time but there is one bar in Britain that you're allowed to smoke in and that bar just happens to be in the Houses of Parliament these people make laws for us to follow, but they don't follow them themselves. Absolute disgraceful and an absolute joke. And people like Keir Starmer are nothing but parasites. Like I say, his job is supposed to be to represent the people that voted for him and to represent the British public. But instead, all he does is annoy and patronise the British public. He gaslights them. Everybody's a racist. Everybody's intolerant. And everybody that disagrees with these government's policies are totally wrong at the end of the day. And you'll have the full force of the media and the government and potentially even the police on your back just for expressing unpopular opinions. And they're not unpopular along the people, along with the masses of the people in the United Kingdom. Because most people in the United Kingdom don't want mass immigration. Most people want to try to keep England as actually being England and there's nothing racist about that there's a lot of countries that feel the same way I mean it's not like you see countries in the Middle East you know allowing millions of poor white people to come into the country and you know obviously not and nobody's expecting them to do that but in this country that's what we do and we do it under the pretense that we're trying to help these people. No, you're not trying to help anybody. The only people that you're trying to help is yourselves and the rich corporations that you represent because they're the ones who pay you. It's all cash for access. That's the way it works in the United Kingdom. If you've got money, then you can manipulate government policies. If you haven't got money, then you're fucked. If you haven't got money, then you don't have no say with what the government do other than your little vote, putting a tick next to a box putting a tick in a box that's the only thing that you have if you haven't got money if you haven't got money in this country you can't get justice if you haven't got money in this country you're pretty much fucked but the Labour government uh, coming along attacking its own people coming out with stupid plans like stopping smoking in beer gardens and claiming that it's to take the pressure off the NHS but you know look at the facts the facts is the facts are that every time you buy a packet of tobacco or cigarettes from a shop legally, then obviously most of that money is going towards the NHS, or at least it's going towards taxes, so it should be going to the NHS. So what's going to happen then? So if you're going to stop people smoking in beer gardens, are you going to stop fat bastards from going to McDonald's twice, three times a day or something? Are you going to limit the amount they can eat to protect the NHS? Are you going to stop alcoholics from using pubs? I mean, don't forget, pubs are actually making money off alcohol, which is a drug. And, you know, about gambling companies, something that has a massive negative impact on everybody's lives, and Google and YouTube and the internet is advertising the fuck out of it. You can't go on the internet without being pressured to gamble. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, it pisses me off because, you know, my... My kids, my, my son likes to watch the football on YouTube and every time we put a football highlights on YouTube there's a gambling advert before it. And so how can they do that? They know that children like football and yet Google, the absolutely other disgraceful parasites, uh, are happy to advertise gambling to children. And now obviously Google's main man, Mr Beast, YouTube's main man, he's also advertising gambling to children as well. So, you know, this country's got no morals, but, you know, then we pretend that we've got morals when, well, the government pretend that they've got morals when it comes to stopping people from smoking. You know what, Keir Starmer, you know what, your job is to represent the people, 
not to dictate to the people what we can and can't do. I honestly believe that this Labour Party will be finished within the next, well, as it is with the Labour, uh, you know, with Keir Starmer as Prime Minister. I would be absolutely amazed if he lasts two years as Prime Minister because I've never seen anybody as ridiculous as him. He's an absolute joke. He can't tell you the difference between a man and a woman. He can't run a country. He's patronising and annoying the British public. He's inciting violence. He's inciting riots. He's hiding behind the police and his security. I mean, these people are actual terrorists. This Labour Party are a bunch of terrorists. And the target is you, the British public. And really, people need to start to wake up to it. Because if we don't start to wake up, then this is just going to continue until it is actually much too late. I mean, it's already getting late. It's going to be much too late if people don't start to wake up. Now, people in this country, like I say, we're programmed, we're programmed to hate anybody that exercises freedom of speech. Tommy Robinson is a classic example. Like I say, <coughs> I don't agree with everything that Tommy Robinson says or does at all. But I do agree with his right to say what he says and to do what he does. I agree that he should have freedom of speech, even if that freedom of speech is speech that most people don't want to hear. You know, at the end of the day, it's just Tommy Robinson is allowed to express his opinion and people that are annoyed at this man going around exercising his, freed, his, his right to freedom of speech are just programmed. Obviously, you know, He's allowed to do that, and you're allowed to do that as well. So, you know, why are people getting so annoyed just because they disagree with him? I mean, I don't know who said it, but it's a very famous saying, and it's something like, I disagree with what you say, but I would fight to my death for the right for you to say it. And that is true. At the end of the day, freedom of speech is the most important thing. It's actually the only thing that we've got left in this country is freedom of speech. And this Labour government don't even want you to do that. They're a bunch of dictators. They're a bunch of terrorists. And they're a bunch of extremists themselves. And every time somebody disagrees with them, they call them far right. They call them intolerant. They call them racists. Anything to try to take people's eyes off them. And to try to put the and try to put the British people fighting against each other, fighting each other, instead of fighting our common enemy, which is the government in this country, whether it be Labour or the Conservatives. People are allowed to express an opinion on government policies. Mass immigration is a government policy. Yet when anybody expresses a negative opinion against mass immigration, they automatically classed as a racist or an extremist or intolerant or hateful or far right anything to silence people just name calling that's all this government are doing is name calling well if they're name calling then surely we can name call and to be honest Sir Keir Starmer is nothing but a puppet of Tony Blair's he's an absolute prick he hasn't got no idea how to run a country I wouldn't trust him to run my bath let alone to run a fucking country and yet we're stuck with him I mean like I say everybody that disagrees with him is intolerant and it's as simple as that that's the way he looks at it anybody that disagrees with the policies of this absolute fascist prick Sir Keir Starmer is intolerant and racist and ex an extremist the police are going around uh, defending the government the government are hiding behind the police they're using the police Pe the police are supposed to be the job of the police are supposed to be to protect the British people but they're not doing that they're protecting the British government against the British people but the trouble is these police officers are not particularly rich people they have to live in the same system we have to live in and I don't understand how they can do this I mean you know, they're supposed to be helping us, or at least keeping this country in order, sort of thing. And instead of doing that, they're, they're accusing, the, they're going after the British people. In my opinion, Sir Keir Starmer should be arrested for inciting riots and violence, because he's the cause of it all. 
he's the one who's going around calling everybody racist just because they don't like mass immigration. I mean, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. But unfortunately, we stuck with this Labour Party for another five years. But I would like to bet that at the end of these five years, we will not hear from the Labour Party for a very long time. Unless they win it on another technicality like they did this one. You know, only 20% of the British public actually voted the Labour government. To me, that makes them an illegitimate government. They're not a government that uh, that have been voted in by the vast majority of people. The vast majority of people didn't vote for Labour and don't want Labour. So why have they got such a big, massive majority? And why are they allowed to do this sort of thing so unchallenged? It's absolutely ridiculous. And another thing is is it's time for Britain to stop supplying weapons to Ukraine. And by Britain stopping supplying weapons to Ukraine, you'll be ending the war in Ukraine, because as soon as Ukraine hasn't got the weapons, then it can't fight the war. But yeah, thanks for listening anyway. Thank you very much. I'm out.